Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are validating those of you all who are not ungrateful. You're just disappointed when it comes to gifts. Disappointed, not grateful. These individuals who receive some items, they were people who I met over the years, as well as people who were family members. And I would hear often this statement, well, the thought counts. But you could clearly see on their faces that they weren't happy. They weren't happy about what they received. They were trying real hard to be satisfied with the item. They even came up with some thoughts in terms of what the item could be used for. But the truth of the matter was, was that many of those gifts ended up being in closets, under beds, given away, uh, repurposed, you name it. Folks were not happy. They weren't happy because they had already told the buyers what they wanted. But the buyers decided that they were going to get what they felt. And usually what they felt was something that was going to make them feel good. Okay, something that was going to um, not cost much at all. Okay. There are those individuals who will right away call someone a name or two. You're ungrateful. You don't appreciate anything and all of that. But the truth is, is that some of these people who scream the loudest, they're selfish individuals. You see, they have their budget in mind and their budget says, I'm only going to spend twenty, forty dollars That's it. That's it. But the item is about $10 more. No, uh-uh, I'm not spending no more than this. But the person said that they really need it. I don't care what they said they needed. I'm going to get them this. Now, I don't hear love in that. And I sure, I sure don't see any generosity. I don't see any kindness. What I see with a lot of these folks who are quick to call somebody ingrates, ungrateful, you don't appreciate this and that. What I see are people who are more concerned about themselves and less concerned about other people. What I see are some people who are argumentative, who are angry types, who are mean spirited to begin with. And yet some will call themselves believers. Jesus, if he was like the way some of these so-called I'm a good person type of folks, if he was like those people, he would have never got on a cross. (laughs) <laughs> you see, I'm not making any major sacrifices for these ingrates, but they need your help, Jesus. Oh, you see, but thank God, thank God for his son. And some of these individuals, they don't see where they're wrong. They will spend more time justifying the fact that, look, at least I bought this person something. At least I've even went out of my way to get them something, but it's not what they want. It's not what they need. Can't you understand that? Oh, take that back and get that person a better item. Look, this, is this your money? Is this your money? I'm just saying. Now you got couples arguing with one another because somebody doesn't want to do what's right because somebody is too busy worried about their own selfish needs because somebody really doesn't like the person. A lot of times that's the case. I really don't like your mother. I really don't like your father. I really don't like any of these people. Okay. So don't you dare tell me that I need to buy this. Look, the budget is this. You better figure it out. You better work with whatever the money is. That we have for these items. But if you spend a penny over. Oh it's going to be some problems. And so this is why some of these daughters and sons. End up showing up with these cheap gifts. Because they got this partner. That doesn't want them to spend. But so much money. But meanwhile though. Oh this is where it gets interesting. Meanwhile their mother and father though. They're going to get the better gifts. (laughs) See you see. Now you got even more issues. With some of these people. Because. It really wasn't about, for some of them, about the uh, 
the the uh, the item and how much it costs and all that. It was about I want to make sure that my family gets the best. OK, OK, I want to make sure that uh, he's not going to spend too much on his mom and his sister and everybody else, because, well, my family, they've done so much and <laughs> I don't even like those folks over there. You see, this is the kind of stuff that goes on. That's why if you know that you harbor ill feelings, if you know you got issues with people, why are you celebrating a holiday? <laughs> why are you forcing yourself to do stuff that you really don't want to do? Matter of fact, my God says that we're not even supposed to be entangled in a yoke of bondage. And to be honest with you, many holidays are nothing more than a yoke of bondage. It's mental enslavement for some folks to be around their narcissistic family members and friends. It's uh, some physical bondage for some people because they won't even let you go. You show up, okay, at their family festivities and I want to leave in two, three hours. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's nighttime. It's almost another day. And then people wonder why there's arguments. They wonder why people pout, why people say, I'm not going to do this next year. But then what do they do? They end up doing it the next year and the next year. And they keep hoping for the best and they keep hoping for the best. And then they might get one year that, oh, it was really good. And then the next year is not so good. I told one of my kids, I said, the best times that I recall when it came to holiday celebrations was when I was younger, when I was a child myself, because I was sheltered from the adult stuff to a certain extent. And then once I got older and started being uh, discerning and so forth, I started seeing a lot of stuff and I could understand why adults were kind of sheltering me from some things because of the ugliness, because of the negativity and the rudeness and everything else that a lot of these adults do to one another while they put a little fake smile on their face. You got some people who they say, I'm not going, I'm not going to have another holiday event, but then they turn around, they feel pressured and then they go ahead and do it. But then they'll say things like, but I'm only going to spend this amount of money and I'm not going to uh, be buying up all the good food. Hmm. They can have some cheap stuff as far as I'm concerned. Well, why would you even put yourself in that position to want to do anything if you knew that you really didn't want to do, you see? We've got some negative folks, some ugly folks, some downright evil folks. We've got some folks with hidden agendas. We got some folks that are just bitter. We got some folks that are always talking about one another. But then when the holiday season shows up, they're thinking, well, uh, where's my gift? And then once they get the gift, they're not happy with it because the person who gave it to them had issues with them. And so as far as they're concerned, you get what you deserve which is maybe that $5, $10, $20 item. <laughs> and you can tell, you can tell who has issues with one another just by the types of gifts that are coming across their uh, way. You see, you can tell. And folks are putting on, oh, thank you so much. Oh, give me a kiss. Give me a hug. Knowing full well, you don't even like that woman. You don't like that man. <laughs> And as I got older, I saw it. I saw it. And it was sad, though. It was sad to see that people were literally forcing themselves to deal with folks. And this is my house. Wait a minute. Hold up. This is my house. Why do I have to force myself to deal with people? <laughs> I wonder if they ever even thought that way. I guess not, because year after year, the same people kept inviting the same people and folks eventually got tired of just stuff that they either uh, grew apart or they got so busy and they just said, forget it. I'm not getting mixed up with this family or some of them. They broke up with their, uh, you know, with the sons, with the daughters and so forth. So um, the mamas who didn't really like them anyway, they were glad that that sort of thing happened. So and the fathers, well. A lot of the fathers, they weren't even concerned about any of it as far as they uh, as far as they knew everything was OK as long as they had some food and some drink. That's why some folks, you can't even sit down and talk about all of your frustrations with the holidays because they're not that deep into it anyway. Matter of fact, some of these people are the ones that warn others. Why are you even doing all of this? You know you don't like these people. You know you don't have enough money. You know you don't like the kind of gifts that they buy you. I mean, really, why do you do it? 
And so you really can't bounce off all of your issues with some of these folks because they told you from the door not to get involved. Okay. Okay. Now, what will you, will some learn having received some gifts that they really didn't like? Well, buy your own gifts. <laughs> That's the first lesson to be learned. Start making some money and saving that money and buying what you really want and don't rely on other people to get what you can get for yourself. You get some goofy gifts that show up. Some people who they've known you for years and they want to go and buy your favorite snacks. I mean, I can buy my own favorite snacks. I don't need you to buy me snacks. You see, let's be creative. Let's find out uh, what people really like. How about sitting down and talking to them? Okay, some people don't even want to do that. So you learn, you learn, okay, I'm going to get my own gifts. The other thing you learn is that do I want to be a part of any gift opening experiences? Okay, because it does hurt, though, to see some of the really nice people. Oh, they're just so generous and they really bring people together and they get nothing. Or if they do get something, it's just very blase. So maybe you don't want to be a part of that because you take it too personal. You might be that one that's quite bold and you just start talking about everybody and everything. You know, after all of what mama did, after all of what daddy did, and you guys got the nerve to show up and you're empty handed. And then some of you guys, you know, you bought that stuff at the dollar store. You are just OK. If you know you're that way, maybe the gift opening experience is not a good idea for you to be a part of. OK. And then you've got some individuals, okay, you are the holiday host, right? You've got all of this stuff that you've put together, but then you have your own financial issues. So why do you keep doing that to yourself, okay? you Why do you do that to yourself? You know that you got bills right around the corner, but yet you did all of these things. Then you're going to resent some folks. You say, no, I'm not. I'm just a good-hearted, sweet person, and I would never. But then you start listening to your conversation as those bills come in. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're not going to be all that sweet and nice. And and then on top of that, when folks are being mean to you or being disrespectful. Oh, I'm not going to buy another gift. I can't believe them. Well, I don't get involved in the holidays. I don't. If somebody invites me or what have you, then out of respect, I may go depending on the setting. OK, and also, of course, I got to say this, but I do pray. And if the Lord speaks into my spirit and says, no, I don't want you going anywhere, then I don't do it. And I'll tell you, I get my blessings that way over the years for sacrificing all that pagan celebration and all that other stuff that goes on. OK, so some people say, well, you know, how is it that you draw so close to the Lord and all that? Because I'm willing to give up some things I'm willing to give up fleshly desires in order to get some things in the supernatural realm and some people don't get that that's over their heads well you haven't walked long enough or close enough with the lord to understand that there are times where we we've got to conduct some spiritual fast and it's not always about abstaining from food and drink sometimes you've got to ab abstain from celebrations ab abstain from uh, talking to different people okay because you will end up sooner or later, if you get mixed up with the wrong folks, they're going to bring out the ugly in you. You may have thought, oh, I'm a decent person, I'm good and everything else. But you get around the right ones, they're going to test you. They're going to test you to the point where you might end up forgetting that you're a child of God. Because some people are just that rough. They're just that mean. They got a lot of ugliness going on with them. And when you know that people are like that, whether they're in your family or in someone else's family, you don't force yourself to be somewhere where you know full well you are going to fall into the temptation of wanting to curse somebody, pour somebody, punch somebody, do any number of things to somebody. And remember, God created that person, too. And you may not be in the right. You may think you're in the right, but you may not be in the right. You might be the one that gets so tired of all of the stuff that you snap one day. And who's to blame but you? Because you knew you shouldn't have been around those folks. You've got those people who I've mentioned in the past. They're very prideful. They're arrogant. They think they're better than everybody else. They want to brag about what they bought, where they've been. And now with all of these video cameras and so forth, 
Some of these folks, they got to put everything out there on the Internet. Look at what I bought my daughter. Look at this beautiful ring my husband bought me. Oh, yes. Look at all this stuff. We just bought a brand new home. You putting all your business out there. And then some people wonder why the thief, the thief in the night shows up and takes. You can't keep parading stuff in front of people's faces that are broke, busted and disgusted and think they're not going to start thinking some things. Not that long ago, I guess somebody got tired of looking at the bank on the way home and on the way to work. The person decided to go and rob the bank <laughs> and had all of us in this neighborhood that I live in. Uh, the police told us that we all had to stay indoors because this person was on the loose. So the police knew that they, they were pretty desperate. They were pretty desperate. So they didn't want us to get hurt. So you got these folks that they don't care after a while. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about your safety. They just want what they want when they want it. And they may curse you. They may steal from you. They may uh, lie on you. They may do any number of things because I don't like you or I don't appreciate all of this stuff that you did because you could have done better. You don't know what is going on in some of these people's minds until <laughs> the writing's on the wall. Well, those of you all, I, my, oh wow, my, my apologies, uh, that you had to go through some stuff like that when it came to the gift exchange and feeling disappointed and, you know, you communicated all of the stuff that you really wanted and then you got nothing but the blues. I pray in Jesus name that you will be able to get the things that you need. And I pray that those individuals that did that sort of thing, knowing full well that it was not right. I pray that the Lord will deal with them. Well, I thank you so much as always for listening to God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. And if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. To God be the glory.